Welcome to Artisphere, presented by TD Bank, the virtual experience. And this Kidsphere demo is sponsored by Spinx. My name is Grant. I'm an artist, a maker, and the director of ReCraft Creative Reuse Center. We connect and inspire creative people like you with reusable materials. And today, we're going on a craft hunt in your very own home, finding reusable materials right there, under your bed, under the sofa cushions, in the closet, all those places. Um, so today, um, we're going to find these materials. I'm gonna walk you through that. I'm gonna reveal what you can make out of these cool things. I'm gonna show you the steps very quickly, and then we're actually going to do the craft. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks of how to do that. Um, yes, uh, parents, this is definitely for all ages. Um, there is gonna be some, some scissor work. The good news is, um, we're just going to be going through some paper, um, some thick paper, so it should be pretty good um, for everyone of all ages. With that, let's get started. Um, as you find materials around your home, you can be as creative as you like, so long as they meet the basic description here. Uh, if you get stuck, that's okay too. We're going to do our best and we're going to improvise. That is what this is all about. So here are the materials we're about to go find around in your house. The first one we're gonna need some awkward family photos, all right? One picture of each person and animal in your family, whoever your family is, or for this craft, whoever your family is. Um, snapshots, portraits, school pictures where your eyes are closed. These are the things we're looking for. All right, so you might be reaching for the family album. A mm, little bit dangerous because the ones in the album, someone has already picked out, they wanted to keep those, keep those preserved. So definitely ask your parents before you reach for something in your album. What you're looking for, these guys. It's the envelope of all the ones that didn't make it in the album, didn't make it in the frame, right? Here we go. Now in these pictures, you're gonna find a couple portraits, couple outtakes, now we're looking. All right, so um, funny poses are great. It's okay if someone is not smiling the most beautifully. It's actually funnier and better that way. So the worst but close-up pictures you can find, perfect. Next thing on our list, a set of small posts. Um, certainly pencils will do, pens, markers, etc. cetera. Um, you might have a bunch of coffee stirrers in your house or maybe a few stray uh, chopsticks. That's fine. You want um, one of them, they should be at least four inches long, and you need one of them for each of the pictures that you picked out. So um, I don't think you're gonna have any trouble finding those. The next thing, a small cardboard box, a shoe box is ideal. Um, those brown boxes that seem to land on your doorstep every day, those are perfect too. And you're going to want a small picture, poster, um, some kind of wrapping paper. Basically, it's gonna be big enough to cover two sides of your box. So even newsprint, um, Christmas wrapping paper is fine. I happen to have this awesome shiny copper paper that, that we might use. It's very noisy too. All right, and then on to the tools. Um, scissors, school scissors should work uh, perfectly fine. Those are great. Um, these guys, these are sometimes called pattern scissors. Can you see that right there? It's got a little bit of a serrated edge. This one has like a crisscross uh, pattern to it. I love these for this project and you'll see why in a few minutes. The last thing you're gonna need, absolutely must have a little bit of tape. It can be masking tape, it can be duct tape, it can be the fancy tape that your parents don't want you to touch. Um, you're not gonna need very much of it, but you are gonna need some tape for this project. Just a little bit. All right, ready, set, go. Find the stuff around your house. Ask your parents, check your junk drawers, find the cool stuff, hit pause, when you're ready, we'll be ready to make the craft. Tick tock, all right. You guys know what we're making yet? Have you figured it out? What are we gonna do with this stuff? What could we possibly use with awkward family photos, tape, sticks? What are we going for here? How about your very own set of family puppets? You're gonna be making some puppets of your family. These are awkward family. This is a picture of me when I was like a teenager. It's not a great picture. It's a terrible picture. That's why it never made it in the album. This is a picture of my host father from Germany. And now I can, I can reenact memories that I have, or I can make some new ones, all kinds of things. Um, and by the way, if you did not find any awkward family photos, I said these can be pictures of whoever you deem your family to be. So maybe you have a pretty small family. 
You know, maybe you might need to add some other people to that family, right? Totally up to you. But this is what we're gonna be making. This is such a simple and fun craft. I have to say, this guy sits on my desk all the time now and I look at it and I'm like, oh man, Make, brings up all these fond memories. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take your picture. Um, step one is take a picture. You're gonna use your scissors, hopefully pattern scissors, if you can find them. And you're gonna wanna cut around the picture. You do not wanna get too close. Um, then you're gonna lay it face down. You're gonna put it on a stick. You're gonna tape the stick. Crisscross tape. Now you've got yourself a puppet. The other thing we're gonna do is you're gonna take your shoe box or small cardboard box, cover it in the paper, and you can either use it as a stage just like that, or you might need some parents help for this. You can actually take the sharp end of the scissors and puncture holes into the box so that your puppets will actually stand on the stage. That's it. So let's get started. I'm gonna get started with, all right, see this little guy right here? Yeah, there we go. All right, he's mine. And this was a picture. Um, we went to the photo studio and we got pictures made of him. And he looks so cute. I don't know why he's in a sailor suit. That's kind of weird to me. He looks like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. That's from a movie. Um, but uh, the picture is slightly, slightly out of focus. This isn't a good picture, but it's gonna be a perfect puppet. Um, notice how I'm not cutting this little kiddo's face or head. Don't get too close to the hair or the fingers. It's totally fine. You wanna leave a little bit of a margin. What I like to do is leave about the same amount of margin around the whole body. I also, if there's any sharp corners or anything like that, don't worry about those. You wanna smooth those out, right? So like down by his legs, this is perfect. Just around his legs, that's fine. There we go. See how I kind of, rather than getting way in between his head and his arms, I just let there be a nice smooth curve there. All right. Easy sneezy. Now personally, if you're using pencils, I like to put the eraser side down. Um, however, if you wanted to make this like an actual pencil that you can use, you'd want to make sure the eraser is side up so that then you can still sharpen the pencil and you can write with this guy here. So we'll try it both ways. We're going to make a few of these, but I'm just going to take a piece of tape. Let me move this box. So you're just simply going to take the piece of tape and I like to make a nice X and that's giving the pencil some stability on the back of the puppet in several directions and that way it'll stay nice and stuck. Don't need to overdo it with the tape. Just a few small pieces will do and any kind of tape will do. My great grandmother used to say, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without and that's what we're doing today. So. There's the back, finished product. Pretty awesome, right? Hey, give me some Cheez-Its or whatever. I don't know. And again, I've got the bottom part of the pencil down so we can sharpen that up. We can actually write it, right? You get a really fancy pen, put a picture on the end. Suddenly you can go sign some important legal documents. Now, as far as covering this box is concerned, there's no magic to this. I'm not even gonna walk through this in this demonstration. It's basically, you're gonna wrap it up like a Christmas present. Um, the one thing that I do wanna show you that's kind of important is if you do choose to puncture the box, first of all, be aware that um, you're using these, the sharp end of the scissors now to do something sharp, and this can be dangerous. I don't wanna see this number where you take the blades apart from each other. If you're not able to do this, as I'm about to show you, you definitely really need to ask for some help. All right, this should go fairly quickly. But you're gonna take the scissors, point down, hold them up here, not on the blade, and then you're gonna take your hand and you're just kinda gonna go pop, pop, like this. Hey, just like that. Once they're in, you can twist them around a little bit, a little bit if you want, and what that's gonna allow is for our puppets to sit in there just like that, all right? So, let's make a few more of these. We're gonna put this on speed round, all right? Let's see how fast I can make puppets of my whole family. So there they are, right? 
All right, so now we've got Gargamel and he's chasing a Smurf and also a snowman. What do you think? The best part about this craft is it's not just fun to do and it's not just fun to like look at up in a window, but it's actually interactive and you can play with these as much as you want. Puppets are super cool. Um, you can make sock puppets if you're really into puppets. Definitely please take pictures and share what you made out of this, both how you made it and um, the finished product. We'd love to see it. You can tag Recraft at RecraftGVL. Last thing I want to share with you is, it's not exactly a poem, it's a technique. This is called using scamper questions. Scamper questions help you move with quick, light steps as you craft. And that's what scamper means. It means to run with quick, light steps. So if you ever get stuck when you're doing a craft project, don't forget to try and substitute something. Ask yourself if you can combine that thing with something else. Um, see if you can adapt something to it, modify it or magnify it, make it bigger, smaller, who knows? See if you can put the material to another use. And this is the heart of creative reuse, which is what ReCraft is all about. Found art is not the art of perfection. Found art is the art of resourcefulness, of finding quick and novel ways to solve problems. So some other ways you can do things. Um, if you get stuck on a project, you can eliminate something, just take it away, right? Just like we only use one piece of tape on these puppets, but we use two over here. And don't forget to rearrange things as well. So scamper, you can practice scamper at home. If you ever get stuck on any kind of challenge, um, these are good kind of questions to ask yourself and words to use. So I hope you had fun today and please enjoy your puppets. Thank you to our sponsor, Sphinx. Please enjoy the rest of your visit to Artisphere presented by TD Bank, the virtual experience.